Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel The Teaching Show. If you find this video useful, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon for more updates. I am Dr. Pulam Nigam and I am developing a course on process calculation. Um, in the last video, we had seen several problems on multiple unit. Today, I will take another problem on involving multiple unit and then I will use the same problem to introduce recycle to you guys okay so let's start the problem uh, this is based on evaporative crystallization of k2cro4 for simplicity and i will just refer to it as component k so 4500 kg per hour of a solution which contains one third of k is fed to an evaporator in the evaporator some amount of water is being evaporated so that the solution which is coming out of evaporator it contains 49.4% of K. This stream is then fed to a crystallizer in which it is cooled, crystals of K come out. Along with the crystals some amount of entrained solution also comes out. So this uh, amount of solution which is entrained with the crystals it contains 36.4% K by mass. And further it is given that the crystals account for 95% of the total mass of the filter cake. So 95% are the dry crystals and 5% is the entrained liquid. The solution which is coming out of the filter that is the filtrate it has the same composition that is it also contains 36.4% K by mass. Now you have been asked to calculate the rate of evaporation of water in the evaporator and the rate of production of cake is crystals okay so let's follow what we had decided till now let's first write the basis that is 4500 kg per hour of heat solution second step is to make a fully labeled flow chart so i have marked all the knowns and unknowns on this flow chart one thing which is different is that uh, I have a filter cake which is coming out okay that is only one stream which is coming out so filter cake is m.3 plus m.4 where m.3 are the dry crystals of cake and m.4 is the liquid which is entrained with the crystals okay so basically it is one stream but I am just writing it in the form of two flow rates that I had done previously also in problem number 17 where instead of writing the uh, mass flow rate of the entire stream I just split it as mass flow rate of its components. So similar thing I am doing I am just writing it as mass flow rate of the components because I know a relation between these mass flow rates. 95% of this stream is crystals and 5% of this stream is entrain liquid so i know a relation between these two so it will make my um, calculation simpler so th that is just one uh, clever trick i am doing over here okay so third step which we followed was find out degree of freedom on each of the subsystems so on evaporator my degree of freedom is zero because i have two unknowns m.6 and m.2 and i have two independent balance equations because there are two components so degree of freedom is zero on crystallizer and filter unit let's check how many um, unknowns you have one two three four four unknowns i have and i have three equations two balance equations and one equation is the process specification which is the relation between m.3 and m.4 so degree of freedom is one okay so let's start uh, taking material balance first on evaporator where the degree of freedom is zero it's very simple take total balance and then take k balance and then solve these you get the values of m.2 and m.6 so once i have calculated these values i will just update my flow chart so i have put the value of m.2 over here and m.6 over here now I will again go back and check what is the degree of freedom at the crystallizer and filter unit. When I do that what I find is that now M2 is known. So the remaining unknowns are M3, M4 and M5. So I have three unknowns and I have already counted that I have three equations, two independent mass balances and one process specification. So degree of freedom is now zero on crystallizer and filter unit. So now I can solve this. So, I am taking now material balance on crystallizer and filter. So, I am first using process specification which says that the crystals account for 
95% of the total mass of the filter cake. So mass of the crystals in the filter cake is equal to m.3 and mass of solution in the filter cake is m.4. So the ratio m.3 to m.4 will be equal to 0.95 divided by 0 0.05 or it is equal to 19. So I know that the crystals, the crystal mass flow rate that is equal to 19 times the flow rate of the entrained liquid. So I know a relation between m3 and m4. Next I take K balance and then I take water balance and wherever my um, m.3 comes I just replace it with 19 times m.4. On doing that I get two equations in m.4 and m.5 which I have to solve simultaneously in order to get the values of these two unknown variables. So next I am going to do that. So I get m.4 and m.5 since I know the relation between m3 and m4. So again, I very quickly I get m.3 that is equal to 620.65 kg per hour. Okay, so my next step will be again to update my flowchart. So this is my balanced flowchart for the process. Okay, one thing I would like to tell you or I would like to bring your attention to is that uh, what is the amount of crystal yield you, which you are getting? It is 620.65 kg per hour. Okay, and this stream, stream 5, nothing has been talked about it. So probably this is the stream which is being discarded in this process. But this is a huge flow rate. And if I just calculate the amount of um, K in this, it is about 867.5 kg per hour. Okay, so along with this stream, I am rejecting a very high quantity of K uh, along with this. Okay. In fact, it is much more than your crystal yield. So whatever the raw material which we were putting in, most of them, most of it or more than half of it, I am just rejecting it. I am not using it. If I am a manufacturer and someone has designed a process like this for me, I will really have sleepless nights because I am just throwing away all my money in the rejected stream. Okay. So a clever uh, engineer like you might suggest uh, because this is an era of recycle, reuse, so a smart engineer might suggest to this manufacturer that why don't you recycle this stream instead of rejecting it. So this uh, manufacturer, it he thinks, okay, he is very happy. So now uh, he is just thinking, okay, let's just recycle it. So now uh, instead of rejecting this stream, it is being recycled back to the evaporator and crystallizer unit. Okay. Once I recycle this stream, then what will happen? All the flow rates will change. Even the yield of crystals which I get it will change. Okay. So now the changed problem is if I recycle the filtrate which is excuse me, which is coming out uh, and combine it with the fresh feed. So I am combining the fresh feed with the recycle. Whatever this combined stream which we get, that we call as combined feed. Okay. So if I feed this to the evaporator, then what will be the values of these? mass flow rates that is what is now the next problem okay so we know the basis we already have the fully labeled flow chart so next we will do is we will start calculating degree of freedom at various subsystems so my first subsystem is mixing point where my recycle stream is mixing with the fresh feed let's see how many variables i have m.7 one mole fraction over here and m.5 so I have three unknowns. I have only two independent material balance equations. So degree of freedom is one. Let's go and check degree of freedom at the evaporator. How many unknowns I have? One, two, three, four. So I have four unknowns and I can write only two equations. That is the two independent material balances. So my degree of freedom is two. Let's go and check my degree of freedom at crystallizer. How many unknowns? One, two three four four unknowns and there are three equations two balance equations and one relation between m3 and m4 so i have degree of freedom which is equal to one so i cannot start calculations by taking material balance on any of these subsystems okay let's check degree of freedom for the entire system okay how many unknowns i have m.6 m.3 and m.4 so there are three unknowns because this is the entire system uh, this recycle stream doesn't come into picture because it is nowhere crossing my this envelope and further this is just a process tree okay so i'm just treating 
this as a whole system. So only three streams are crossing this envelope. One is going in and two are coming out. Okay. So I have only three unknowns. I have two independent material balance equations and I have one process specification which gives me the relation between m.3 and m.4. Okay, so my degree of freedom is zero for the entire system and I can take an overall balance on this complete system and calculate the values of m.3, m.4 and m.6. So that's what I'm going to do next. Process specification, we have already seen this, how this equation comes. Then I will take K balance and water balance. Wherever my m.3 comes, I just replace it with 19 times m.4. Okay. So when I do that, I calculate the value of m.4. Since I know the relation, I also calculate m.3. Put the value of m.4 in water balance and calculate m.6. So now I have calculated these three variables. m.6 is the amount of water which is being evaporated in the evaporator. Okay. And m.3 is the yield of the crystals which I am getting. And 77.46, that is m.4. This is the amount of liquid which is entrained along with this with these crystals okay let's update our flow chart and then once again from here how to proceed we will have to again take our degree of freedom at different subsystems so i am doing degree of freedom analysis at mixing point since nothing has changed so degree of freedom remains one at evaporator i know m.6 so degree of freedom has reduced by one but it is still one Okay, at crystallizer and filter unit, my degree of freedom has reduced to zero because now I have only two unknowns, M2 dot and M5 dot and um, I have two independent material balance equations. So I can easily solve this. So what I will do is next, I will take a K balance on the crystallizer unit and a water balance on the crystallizer unit. I will get two equations which are in M2 dot and M5 dot. I will solve them simultaneously and get the value of these two unknowns. So once I get the value of these two unknowns, then I will again go and update my flowchart. Okay. Taking material balance, just a recap, it's very simple. Whatever the inlet, that is equal to your outlet. So for crystallizer and filter, this is your inlet stream and these are your outlets. So input is equal to output. That is what you are going to do. That's all. Nothing difficult in that. Okay, so till now what we have done, we have calculated this stream, this stream, even I know now how much I am recycling back. Now I have to just calculate what is the composition and the flow rate of the combined feed. So again, uh, before proceeding further, what I will do is I will take degree of freedom at mixing point, which now comes out to be zero because there are two unknowns and two equations. Similarly, at the evaporator, Again, my degree of freedom is zero because I have two unknowns and there are two independent material balance equations. So I can solve either at either of these points. So I decide to solve at the mixing point. Just take a total balance directly. It will give you the uh, feed, uh, the flow rate of the combined feed. And if I take water balance, I will get the value of the uh, composition or the, that is the mole fraction of K in the combined feed. Now, one more thing which comes into picture is recycle ratio. Sometimes problems ask you to find recycle ratio. That is the mass of recycle divided by the mass of the fresh feed. If I do that, for this problem, it comes out to be 1.25. So now this is my balanced flow sheet for evaporative crystallization process. And you will see that the crystal yield with recycle has gone up drastically as compared to the crystal yield without recycle. So being a clever engineer, you did a nice thing to suggest to the manufacturer to recycle this stream instead of rejecting it back into the evaporator system. But I think um, the engineer has forgotten something about the design specifications of these evaporators and crystallizer and filter unit. So if you have any idea, please uh, leave a comment and tell me what the engineer is missing what he should have suggested more to the manufacturer before recycling the stream back into the evaporator. Uh, thanks for watching and please um, interact with me, leave comments so that I can make more such videos. Thanks a lot.